Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this fifth Sunday of Easter. Let's see. Today, Jody, is the Feed the Faith group still cooking after worship today? Okay. Um, and you can still take names of people who need meals, correct? Okay. So if you know someone who needs a meal, give the name to Jody or Stephanie or Bonnie. Cozy. Or Cozy. <coughs> cozy. I'll get it figured out. It makes complete sense now that I think about it. Okay. But you can always email the church. You can always email the church. Or Cozy or Jody. Okay. I'm changing my notes right now. Yes. All right. Um, as you can see, we're getting graduation photos. Um, I know we've got at least uh, another new one uh, this morning. So send them in. You can send them to the church. You can send them or text them to me or to Brady, and we'll get them up as soon as we can, as soon as we get that information and can add it to the program. Deacons are going to meet this morning, Michelle, right? Yep, after church. Okay. Uh, so let them in the fellowship line first so that they can get a plate and eat while they're having their meeting, right? Yeah, sure. Sure. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, mark your calendars for the end of Sunday school event on May 19th. Also on May 19th is Pentecost, meaning we're red if you got it. And that's the day our confirmation class confirms that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior and become active members of the congregation. So May 19th is a big day. Yes, ma'am. It's theirs also. Yeah, we knew we knew it was the other school system that we're involved with. It's the, so they're going to participate and run. What time is the graduation? Um, I believe it's two. And Adam, I have to be there. Yeah, she's be there early because she plays for the dance for that. Okay, so everybody's going to get confirmed and run. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's the nature of calendars these days. They, you don't know until the last minute, and then you know. I don't do so well in that environment. I just don't. <laughs> That's why I feel off today and lots of days with Cozy. All right. Someday, my life will just like go according to plan. It'll be great. Right? All of you in retirement, isn't that how? No? no? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> no. No. Yeah, I've learned that. So, due to busy schedules, there's no youth group meetings planned for the near future. Because that's just the nature of the beast these days. So, any other announcements anybody would like to share this morning? As our first act of worship, we are going to pass the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Amen.
All right, if now that you've all seated yourselves down, if you're able, will you please stand and we'll join in the call to worship. In the wilderness, water brings life. Seek us out, O oh God, and take us to the water. In the word of God, the good news gives light. Seek us out, O oh God, and fill us with understanding. In the bread and wine, the body of our Savior nourishes everyone. Seek us out, O God, and give us yourself. Here is the water of life, the word that feeds, the food of eternity. Come and praise the vine that gives all goodness. Our opening hymn is number 232, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess to God and to one another our failure to love our neighbor. Let us pray together. God of mercy, we confess that we have not borne the fruit of the Spirit. We have not loved others as you have loved us. We have denied the promises of baptism and cut ourselves off from you. Forgive us restore us that we may abide in your love and live out your mercy for the sake of Jesus Christ in whose name we pray amen you have already been cleansed by the word that God has spoken to you in baptism God claimed you and joined you to Christ as branches to a vine believe the promise given to you in Jesus Christ, 
you are forgiven. Amen. children, please come forward. Good morning. How are you? Good. Happy Easter. What do you mean? He said, Wait, what? <laughs> That's the, huh? Easter happened already. Yeah, it did. You're right. The day that we call Easter happened. But we have a whole big block of Sundays that we call Easter. Did you know that? Today is the fifth. You did. Good for you. All right. Our, our Easter. Easter. Yes. Well, at the beginning of the service, at the beginning of the service, I said it was the fifth Sunday of Easter. Do you know how many there are? Ten. Hmm? Ten. Ten? No, but that's a good, that's a good guess. Huh? Nope. Okay, so today's the fifth one. Huh? Till, uh, next Sunday is the fifth. Uh, that, uh, May 5th will be the sixth Sunday. And then we have the next one, which is the 12th, May 12th, which is also Mother's Day. But it would be the seventh Sunday in Easter. And then the next one is the 19th, and that's called Pentecost. That's when we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. So Easter lasts for seven Sundays. It's like 49 <coughs> days or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So how, how long is Christmas? Christmas, there is a Christmas day, but how long is the Christmas season? Because the church likes, it's not the whole winter. That's a good guess. Do, 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 do. Yeah, 12. Yeah, that's right. It's 12 days. Isn't that crazy? 12 days of Christmas. At the end of Christmas is Epiphany. So at the end of Easter, there's Pentecost. Now, now I'm really going to mess you up. We get prepared for Christmas, don't we? For four Sundays, we get prepared for Christmas. Anybody remember what that's called? Because Christmas is special. And we spend four Sundays getting ready for it. All right, adults, what's it called? Advent. Advent. Yeah, now it's coming back to you. Yeah, pyramids are blue, these things are, are they blue here? No, they're purple here. They're purple here. Hmm? Mommy, yeah. I'm going to get family pictures today. You're going to get family pictures today? Awesome. Okay. So Easter is special, so special, we spend six weeks getting ready. What's that time called? Do you remember? Again, we got purple up here. No? Advent's for Christmas. All right, adults, what's it called? Lent. 
You were going to say Lent. All right. Okay. So we're, we're going to review this. You ready? The two big holidays in the church are what? What's the first one? Christmas and Easter. Christmas and then Easter. And we spent time getting ready for Christmas. How many weeks? And it's called what? Advent. And then the next one is Easter, and we spend six weeks getting ready. What's it called? Lent. Lent. And then Easter goes for how long? Seven days. Seven days. Seven Sundays. Seven weeks. Seven Sundays. So more than a month. Oh, yeah. Pushing on two. Yeah. Okay. Pretty cool. Did you learn something today? Yeah. Ready? Let us pray. Gracious God, we remember that the most important thing is that you sent your son to the world. And he was born a baby, and we celebrate that. And then he died, and he rose for us, and we celebrate that. And we thank you for being with us on all those Sundays and all the days in between for every day of our lives. In Jesus' name, we give you thanks. Amen. Okay, you can go down there if you want. One scripture lesson for this morning from the Gospel according to John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. Hear the good news. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vineyard keeper. He removes any of my branches that don't produce fruit, and he trims any branch that produces fruit so that it will produce even more fruit. You are already trimmed because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. A branch can't produce fruit by itself but must remain in the vine. Likewise, you can't produce fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, then you will produce much fruit. Without me, you can't do anything. If you don't remain in me, you will be like a branch that's thrown out and dries up. Those branches are gathered up, thrown into a fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified when you produce much fruit, and in this way prove that you are my disciples. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay. Y'all know a lot about maintaining vines, do you not? Nope. Maybe? Okay. Twenty-five, thirty years ago, I took master gardener training. I have forgotten almost all of it. <laughs> but anyhow, I like wines, and um, part of uh, my undergraduate degree involves studying. I had to take a wine tasting class and things like that. So, um, so I know a little bit about. Grapevines, at least. Um, And the place I went to school was definitely wine country, so. Anyhow, so I know some basics, like the roots of a vine are super important. They need to be healthy. And if they're weak, you just, the vine doesn't stand a chance. 
So over time, we've learned a few things, and I'm guessing that this may have been true in Jesus' day, that if you have a vine that you like the fruit, but it doesn't last very long and that root isn't very strong, you can graft that vine onto something with a stronger root. It's called grafting. And you may recall some scripture passages where we talk about being grafted into the body of Christ and things like that. So, roots are super important. Vines grow. So you have, like, an arm of the vine, right? And you might have more than one. You may have several of them. And then you'll have branches off of them. And the branches almost always have leaves, right? Correct? Okay. So the branches um, take the strength of the root and, um, and transport it through the... Okay, stop. You got the root, the energy goes through the vine, the vine goes out to the branches, the branches produce the fruit. Everything's important there. Now, disease happens, so you have to inspect the vine and you have to expect, inspect the branches closely because if you get the disease, it can kill the whole thing, even the roots. So you're constantly inspecting to see what needs to be addressed. You can wash it with insecticidal soap, you can wash it with um, things nowadays, you can spray it with chemicals that'll address whatever you think the issue is. Could be a pest, could be a fungus, could be any number of things. If you find disease, you have to cut off the part that is diseased. And you don't wanna just compost it, right? Am I getting this right? You guys know this stuff? You look. <laughs> okay. They do have they do have grapes though. They do have grapes. They do have grapes. We do. Okay. It's more of a pretty thing than for making wine. Okay. Okay. So you're experienced with it. I, I thought you might be. That's why I was looking at you. I thought, uh oh, I'm getting something wrong. I'm not. Okay. Um. So you have to. If you don't want the rest of your orchard or whatever you're growing to be. Um, potentially harmed by this, you cut off the diseased parts, you take it far away, and you burn it. You kill it. So it is not going to infect the rest of your crop. Okay? Pruning. Oh my goodness, pruning is some of the most important parts. Um, I, I think that's the only thing I've left out. And if you're not used to growing things that need to be pruned, it can freak you out. Because <laughs> it doesn't seem to make sense, but it does, because there's only so much energy that can go from the roots out to the vine and then out to the branches. So what you do is you selectively prune for growth. If you got a bunch of leaves, um, it's great because that, you know, they get the energy from the sun and they help to nourish things. However, that can sap the energy too much and what you need to do is to prune to get fruit growth. Um, so a lot of times you're cutting all kinds of stuff way off so that the energy is directed where you want it to go. Any of you declutter your house? It's kind of like decluttering your house. Because there's nothing like walking into a room that is just got, okay, my life. Toys everywhere, <laughs> books everywhere, clothes everywhere, dishes everywhere, right? And you walk in and you just go, <sighs> right? <laughs> But you walk into a house that's all straightened and clean and everything put it in its place and you feel like, oh, good.
Good. Pruning is about that. It's getting it so that the energy goes in a positive direction and you can produce fruit. That vine can produce fruit. So sometimes you're cutting way more away than you're leaving. And then you watch it grow. Did I confuse you? It's okay if I did. I can answer questions. Okay, so those are the most important things that you need to know about that. Next thing you need to know is about where this passage happens. A lot of background for this sermon. It's going to build up because next week we're going to finish, we're going to do another section of this chapter. Okay. You heard of the Last Supper, right? Okay. Happens when? Right before Jesus is betrayed, arrested, put on trial, crucified, dies, right? Okay. We call those things farewell discourses when you look at the conversations that Jesus has with the disciples in the time or right before he leaves. Okay? This happens in John's farewell discourse. In John's gospel, he had a dinner. He had a meal with the disciples. And the thing that John focuses on is something that happens right after the meal. Anybody remember? What, what does Jesus do? Wash his feet? Yeah. He washes the feet of the disciples. And he says, um, you know, you need to serve other people. He teaches them about um, service through that. And um, there's a particular quote I'm searching for. It may come out here. Um, then he tells them that um, somebody is going to betray him. And he tells the disciples, when this happens, you will know that I am. Okay. I'm going to take another sidetrack for a second. What's God's name? Jehovah. That's because of the Hebrew letters that they made up for God's name, because you're not supposed to say God's name. But we decided we'd go ahead and say it, and it looks like Jehovah, if you know Hebrew letters. What does God tell Moses his name is? I am who I am. I will be who I will be. It depends on how you translate it. I am. Okay? Jesus says, somebody's going to betray me. And when that happens, you will know that I am. He has said this multiple times um, before this. In the Gospel according to John, he says it nine times. I am. He says it in, um, in chapter 4, chapter 6, three times in chapter 8, chapter 13, and twice in chapter 18. Okay? He, he does it when he's talking to the disciples when he's walking on water and they're in the boat and he, they're afraid. He says, I am. Do not be afraid. Um, he says it, and of course he says it in 15. Um, he says it when he's in fights with the Pharisees. That's when you see it the most. I am, he says. He also says it as not just a title of I am, but he uses it to say, I am the bread of life. He does this in chapter 6 twice, chapter 8, 9, 10, I mean, all throughout. He says things like, I am the bread of life, 
I am the living bread. I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. I am the gate. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way and the truth and the life. And today he says, I am the true vine and I am the vine. John's the only one who reports these kind of statements. It's really important to understand that Jesus is reminding the disciples that he is connected to God. He has the same name even. He's reminding them, I am. And then he also talks about the, the everyday stuffness of life that he is connected to that. He is the epitome of the gate. He is the epitome of the good shepherd. He is the water of life. He is that. He's talking in everyday terms to connect himself to God and to everything around us. Okay. So... He is talking to his disciples as he's about to be betrayed, after he's washed their feet. Judas, he, he dips the bread, gives it to Judas and said, you know, the one that I hand the bread to is going to betray me. And then he says to Judas, go and do what you need to do. And he leaves. And we know what happens after that, right? So Judas is gone, and he's talking to his disciples about how they're going to need to carry on when he's gone, because he's going to be leaving them. He's been telling them that all throughout, but he's especially telling them that now. I'm going to be gone. You're not going to see me. The world's not going to see me. You'll see me in a new way. Okay? I am leaving. I'm going to the Father. You're going to come, but not now. Because I am the way, the truth, and the life. You will know how to get there. But I'm going to go now. So what he's trying to do is to very pastorally tell them, you got this. You got this. You can do this. Can you put the scripture back up on the screen? So let's look at what he says, bearing all this in mind. Judas is gone. He knows what's about to happen. He's telling them that even Judas betraying them, him is a fulfillment of scripture. What's going to happen needs to happen. He knows it. He's going to be gone so he says to them, listen, I am the true vine. And my father, God, is the vine keeper. He removes any of my branches that don't produce fruit. And he trims any branch that produces fruit so that it will produce even more fruit. You're already trimmed because of the word I spoke to you. So they know. Remain in me. This is what you got to do. Remain in me. And I will remain in you. It's going to happen. I will remain in you. A branch can't produce fruit by itself, but must remain in the vine. Likewise, you can't produce fruit unless you remain in me. AKA, you're going to be scared. It's going to be tough. But we're connected. I'm connected to the Father, and you're connected to me, and I am going to give you the strength, the nourishment, the light, the bread that you need to get through this. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, then you will produce much fruit. 
Good things are coming. You can do this. Without me, you can't do anything. So don't run. Don't run afraid forever. Remember to reconnect with me. Reconnect with me. If you don't remain in me, you'll be like a branch that's thrown out and dries up. Those branches are gathered up, thrown into a fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. I got you, he's saying. I got you. It's going to be different, but I got you. My Father is glorified when you produce much fruit, and in this way prove that you are my disciples. Questions about that? It's a very strong image, is it not? When you dive in, God's got gotcha. you. Day in, day out. Day in, day out. Stay connected. Stay connected. And you'll bear fruit, God's fruit, in this world. Through even the simplest things. Because your roots are in the right place. And we can do it. Amen. We'll go even deeper into it next week. We get to the love part next week. All right, we are going to sing hymn number 450, Be Thou My Vision. I invite you to stand if you are able. that about how many pennies it might be or might not be? Yeah, 42. So. For, 42, okay.
enjoy your crazy busy day today. <laughs> Hopefully the rain holds out. Hopefully the rain holds out. All right. All right. I know we've got some concerns, and I'm hoping we have some joys too. Uh, can someone get the microphone? A one or two? Yeah, we got one there. Probably have to turn it on, right? <laughs> so I have a joy. Um, we went to, we had two track meets this week, um, and Claire got PRs every time for long jump, which just, I mean, I think she's so tiny that she can just jump really far. <laughs> um, so that's exciting. Um, and Brielle is doing really, really well. And then her time yesterday, um, she got second in hurdles. And that time was her PR and also means that she can make it to state if she does that at sectionals. So nice. we're hoping, you know. Um, and then she also is getting first and seconds and high jump every time because she can jump too, apparently. So they're, they're doing really good and it's been a fun season. Good, that's awesome. Who next? Well, I guess my joy is I'm not going to have to clean house for probably two, three weeks because cleaning's done all that, wash the dishes, uh, wash the clothes, everything's all done. Uh, my concern is that, uh, as most of you know, she's having surgery tomorrow with her knee and ask your prayers for a successful outcome. Thank you. Yes. We'll be waiting to hear news of how it goes, please. Y'all in that pew will make sure we all know, right? <laughs> Please, Glennine, can we know? Okay, good. Okay. Okay, Sam, uh, I was bringing him in the house Wednesday, and he lost his balance, and I tried to catch him, couldn't. He went down the basement steps. Oh, no. He's in the hospital, but he did not break or fracture anything, so... Now they want to put him in uh, a skilled facility just to rehab him for 20 days. So I'm going back and forth to the hospital. And then prayers for Corbin too. His seizures are not where he's losing um, his, what he's doing and stuff, but now he's having double vision, blurred vision and stuff. And it's really scaring him, but um, I think there, it's coming up where they're going to take him to Mayo's and they're going to have to go to the next more severe step okay. uh, with him. And he's trying so hard to graduate, and, but it's not going to be, it'll be later because he has to play catch up now because mm -hmm. he has really struggled through the last two years of college and everything. Sure. Also, our one son had um, surgery on both of his hands. My other son will be having shoulder surgery. And I'm going in tomorrow to see about my two shoulders. So it's a combination of a very bad mix-up in our family. So it's like an umbrella over us. Yeah. So just prayers for our whole family. Oh, absolutely. My goodness. And when we get done, I'm going to say something. Go ahead, Bonnie. Um, okay, so baby Reed, had, he was in the hospital from Thursday till yesterday evening with breathing problems. Um, and he's home. They got home yesterday afternoon. He's still having to do albuterol every four hours. So... The appointment that they got for a pulmonary doctor is for January 2025. Mm -hmm. So please, prayers for openings. We've got to get him on a plan. We've got to get a strategy. We've got to get a doctor's appointment. So if you guys could pray, keep praying for Reed. Pray that we can get an appointment going and, uh, and that we get him, get him stable. Okay. Who else? Yep, Kathy. He's coming. I 
think we need to pray for our health care system. I'm sorry. <laughs> An appointment in January is just not acceptable. It is not. So I don't know what's going on, but I hear the same stories all over that they want to see doctors and they can't. The appointments are so far out. So let's, let's pray that we can do something about health care center and get some help closer. Thanks. Yep. Yeah, uh, they're closing down the daycare center that my granddaughter goes to. So they sold it. So um, yeah, so there's hopefully there is an option out there. So we'll see how that goes. But that's all part of the healthcare system. The healthcare system decided to sell the daycare rather than maintain it, and so. All, all the healthcare workers are all going to have to move their children to another healthcare facility, hopefully daycare based. So, healthcare is, you know, tough right now. Um, I just want to say, um, I didn't grow up this way, uh, but in my in my time as uh, interim pastor in different locations, I came across the remarkable practice and power that is in our lineage, but makes a lot of Presbyterians really uncomfortable. And they just wanted to let you know that if you ever wish to have it, um, I will facilitate that. And that's a laying on of hands during prayer. Um, we have a prayer branch over there. Uh, but um, if, if anybody ever feels like they want to have that done before a surgery or before, you know, important things and whatnot, I'm more than happy to facilitate that. And, you know, that could take a couple different forms. It could be during the joys and concerns and anybody who wants to can come and place their hands like ordination on the, on the person who's asking for prayer and my hand would go on the head or shoulder, whatever the person's comfortable for, and we'll just have a prayer. Um, so I just want to let you know that that's something we can do, and you can request it. And I'm more than willing to facilitate that. It's something I've done a number of times in the past. Just it's been a while. But so if ever you want that, just request it. Okay? Is there anybody that wants that this morning? Okay. It's out there. So now you know. Okay. Uh, let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for celebrations like birthdays and graduations and good news and medical outcomes and little victories that we have in our daily lives where we feel like this day just went so well. Help us to remember to always express our thanks to you and to those around us on those occasions. And we thank you so much for this opportunity to come together as the body of Christ and to raise our concerns and share them so that others will surround us with prayer and so that we can send all the positive nourishment through the roots and through the vine to the branches so that people will feel your healing presence in their lives and that they'll know that no matter what, you've got them. We ask that you be with us in this busy week ahead. Help us to remember to return to our roots and to reconnect with you often. And we give you thanks for your son, Jesus Christ, and together we lift the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
And by the way, you don't have to kneel to get the prayer. <laughs> All right. Uh, offering what we have for the sake of others is a discipline of pruning, letting go of our possessions, our time, and even ourselves to extend the gospel witness into the world. Be generous in your ministry of giving. You need not fear. You abide in the vine. Let us present our offerings. pray together. Through our offerings, O oh God, give your loving spirit to a world in need of comfort. Make our many gifts one offering for the world in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 233, The Day of Resurrection.
have been fed and healed, securely abiding as branches of the true vine. Go and tell the story of faith that is given to you by the one who never lets you go. Seek out those who abound with sacred questions and be ready to answer a mystery with love. As Jesus entered into human life, his life is still alive in you. The blessing of Almighty God be, with, be upon you today and always. Amen. Thank you.